A NASA astronaut just said something shocking. SpaceX is moving faster than the Apollo program that put humans on the moon. Think about that. Apollo, the greatest engineering triumph in history, is being outpaced by a private company. In the 1960s, it took two years to build one engine. Today, SpaceX cranks out a new Raptor engine every single day. While NASA spent $257 billion on Apollo, Starship aims for $2 million per launch. Same destination, wildly different approach. Is this evolution or revolution? Let's dive right in. Let's rewind to 1961. President Kennedy stands before Congress and drops what might be the most audacious promise in human history. We're going to the moon, and we're doing it before this decade ends. The problem? NASA didn't even know if it was physically possible. The Soviet Union was winning every battle in the space race. America was desperate, embarrassed, and willing to spend whatever it took. Enter Werner von Braun and his team of engineers. They weren't just building a rocket. They were inventing an entirely new category of machine. The Saturn V became the most powerful rocket ever created. And here's the insane part. They did it with slide rules, pencils, and raw human ingenuity. No computer simulations. No AI optimization. Just brilliant minds working 80-hour weeks fueled by coffee and Cold War paranoia. The heart of this beast was the F-1 engine. Picture this. 178 individually hand-brazed tubes made from Inconel X-750, an alloy so difficult to work with that it cracked if you looked at it wrong. Master craftsmen spent months fabricating each thrust chamber, bending metal by hand, welding in positions that would make modern engineers cry. Each engine took two years to build and cost $16 million in today's money. But here's what nobody talks about. This approach was financially insane. Every Saturn V launch threw away $1.2 billion worth of hardware into the ocean. The first stage, gone. Second stage, drifting in space forever. NASA built each rocket from scratch for every single mission. The total bill for Apollo? $257 billion in today's dollars. Was it worth it? Absolutely. July 20th, 1969. Neil Armstrong's boot touched lunar dust and humanity achieved the impossible. But then something strange happened. We stopped going. The model wasn't sustainable. Once the political urgency faded, Congress asked the obvious question, why are we spending billions to collect moon rocks? That question changed everything. And decades later, a tech entrepreneur from Silicon Valley would answer it in a way nobody expected. In 2002, Elon Musk walked into the aerospace industry with a radical idea. What if we made rockets reusable? The establishment laughed. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, the entire old guard dismissed him as a delusional billionaire playing with rockets. Here's what they didn't understand. Musk wasn't trying to beat Apollo at its own game. He was rewriting the entire rulebook. While NASA optimized for perfection, SpaceX optimized for iteration. While traditional contractors spent years designing the perfect engine, SpaceX built engines, tested them until they exploded, learned from the explosion, and built better ones. The Raptor engine tells this story perfectly. In 2023, SpaceX was manufacturing one Raptor 5, two engine per day. Not per year, per day. Each one cost $250,000. That's 64 times cheaper than an F-1, and it's more advanced in every measurable way. While the F-1's thrust chamber required master craftsmen hand-brazing hundreds of tubes over months, the Raptor's cooling channels are cast, heated, and mandrel-bent by machines. The manufacturing process is designed for mass production from day one. It's not about making one perfect engine. It's about making thousands of good engines fast and cheap. But here's where it gets controversial. SpaceX achieves this by embracing failure in ways NASA never could. When a Raptor engine fails during testing, it's celebrated as data. When a Starship prototype explodes on the launch pad, Elon tweets, exciting test, and starts building the next one. This isn't recklessness. It's a calculated strategy that traditional aerospace literally cannot match. And this is exactly what Clayton Anderson noticed. The NASA veteran didn't just see faster development, he saw a completely different philosophy winning. Clayton Anderson spent 152 days aboard the International Space Station. 
He knows NASA inside and out, and he's not afraid to say what everyone's thinking. NASA is drowning in bureaucracy. Every decision requires committees, reviews, environmental impact studies, congressional hearings, and approval from multiple layers of management. SpaceX has Elon Musk, one person who can wake up, decide to change the entire design of Starship's heat shield, and have engineers implementing it by afternoon. Is this risky? Absolutely. But those failures happen faster than NASA can schedule a meeting to discuss potential failures. The numbers are brutal. NASA's space launch system, the rocket that's supposed to take astronauts back to the moon, took 17 years to develop and cost $4.1 billion per launch. Read that again. $4.1 billion for a single launch using technology that's barely evolved since the space shuttle era. Starship's projected cost per launch, $2 million. We're comparing billions to millions. The SLS throws away its entire rocket after one use. Starship is designed to be refueled and relaunched within an hour. The SLS engines can't be reused. Starship's Raptor 3 engines are built to fly 100 times with just routine inspection. This cost difference isn't just impressive on paper. It's forcing NASA into a position nobody saw coming. Here's where this story takes a stunning turn. NASA's plan to return to the moon, the Artemis program, relies entirely on SpaceX's Starship for the actual lunar landing. The government agency with a $25 billion annual budget needs the private company to complete the mission. The current plan is complex. NASA's SLS launches the Orion capsule into lunar orbit for $4.1 billion. Then Orion docks with a SpaceX Starship already waiting there. Astronauts transfer to Starship, descend to the moon, complete their mission, climb back into Starship, return to Orion, and ride Orion back to Earth. Why all these steps? Because NASA needs to justify the SLS program that's already consumed over $50 billion in development costs. But here's what most people don't know. SpaceX could do the entire mission using only Starship. Musk's 2017 presentation revealed exactly that capability. The original SpaceX vision was beautifully simple. Starship launches from Earth, refuels in orbit, flies directly to the moon carrying 100 passengers or 100 tons of cargo, lands, takes off, and returns to Earth. No separate launch vehicle needed. No orbital docking choreography. Just one fully reusable spacecraft doing everything. But there's a catch, a massive one. To reach the moon and return, Starship needs to refuel in Earth orbit. We're talking about transferring hundreds of tons of super-chilled liquid methane and oxygen between two spacecraft traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. SpaceX's plan? Launch Starship into orbit with nearly empty tanks, then launch eight to 10 more Starships filled with propellant, dock with each one, transfer fuel, and only then head to the moon. Has this ever been attempted at this scale? Never. Is it the linchpin of the entire Artemis timeline? Absolutely. Critics say it's science fiction. SpaceX says it's engineering. NASA has bet America's return to the moon on this untested technology working perfectly. If SpaceX pulls it off, it changes everything. If they don't, Artemis grinds to a halt. This gamble reveals the fundamental difference between how Apollo worked and how modern spaceflight operates. Apollo was about achieving perfection because failure meant death on live television during the Cold War. Every component was tested, retested, and tested again. That approach put 12 men on the moon without a single fatality during a lunar mission. But it also meant NASA moved at the speed of absolute certainty, which is very, very slow. SpaceX moves at the speed of probably good enough. Let's find out. Build it, fly it, see what breaks, fix it, fly again. Starship's development has involved multiple vehicles exploding in spectacular fireballs. Each explosion teaches them something that wind tunnel tests never could. Traditional aerospace engineers watch these explosions with horror. SpaceX engineers watch with notebooks, recording every detail, already planning improvements for the next prototype. It's a fundamentally different relationship with failure, and it only works because SpaceX is spending private money with permission to fail. NASA doesn't have that luxury. Every failure gets congressional hearings. Every setback becomes ammunition for budget cuts. 
They're trapped in a system that punishes the very experimentation required for breakthrough innovation. And this creates an uncomfortable truth. Here's what most people miss. The moon was never SpaceX's real goal. Musk didn't build Starship for Artemis. He built it for Mars, and NASA's lunar missions are basically a paid test run of the technology he needs for interplanetary colonization. Think about that strategic genius. Instead of self-funding the entire development of humanity's first Mars rocket, Musk convinced NASA to pay $2.9 billion for a lunar lander that happens to be a fully capable Mars transport system. Once it works for moon missions, the same vehicle can go to Mars. If Starship achieves its design goals, full reusability, $2 million launch costs, 100-ton payload capacity, the cost of reaching Mars drops from impossible to merely expensive. We're talking about reducing the price of space access by three orders of magnitude. When a NASA veteran says SpaceX is moving faster than Apollo, he's acknowledging that the model that won the space race is obsolete. The craftsman approach that built the F-1 engine was magnificent, but it's as relevant to modern rocketry as a hand-carved wooden ship is to naval warfare. Anderson saw both worlds. He trained in NASA's methodical, safety-obsessed culture, but he's also watched SpaceX go from scrappy startup to the only American company capable of launching astronauts in the time it took NASA to get one SLS rocket to the pad. Here's the nuance. SpaceX can only move this fast because Apollo already solved the fundamental problems. Von Braun's team figured out staging, orbital mechanics, life support, re-entry physics. SpaceX isn't inventing rocketry. They're optimizing it with 21st century manufacturing and a startup mentality. The real story isn't SpaceX good, NASA bad. It's about what happens when different organizational structures attack the same problem. The Saturn V worked because brilliant engineers had unlimited resources and permission to move fast. The moment that urgency evaporated, the program calcified. SpaceX works because they're privately funded, led by someone with decisive control and operating in an era where commercial space is possible. Right now, for better or worse, the private company is lapping the government agency that invented modern spaceflight. So here's what this all means. SpaceX isn't just moving faster than Apollo. They've fundamentally changed how we reach space. Clayton Anderson witnessed the exact moment when rockets stopped being handcrafted monuments and became mass-produced machines. That shift changes everything. This is exactly why NASA, despite spending $50 billion on the SLS, handed the actual moon landing to SpaceX. They recognized the truth. Apollo's perfection at any cost model put 12 men on the moon. SpaceX's iterate and improve approach will put hundreds there. One was a sprint to prove we could do it. The other is building the highway to make it routine. And the timeline? SpaceX plans orbital refueling tests in 2025. If successful, Artemis astronauts could walk on the moon by 2027. But more importantly, that same technology unlocks Mars missions, space stations beyond Earth orbit, and costs so low that private citizens might actually afford the trip. We're not just returning to the moon. We're opening the entire solar system. Here's my question. Do you think SpaceX's rapid failure approach is the future, or does NASA's careful methodology still have advantages? Drop your opinion in the comments. I read every single one. If this breakdown gave you a new perspective on the space race, smash that like button. It tells YouTube to show this to more space fans like you. This is Space Hub, where we cut through the hype and show you what's really happening in space exploration. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss our deep dives into the missions, technology, and people pushing humanity beyond Earth. The race to the moon isn't NASA versus SpaceX, it's humanity versus the impossible. And right now, we're winning.